Hi there, this is Alvin, and welcome to the Kickstart Commerce Podcast, where we share search marketing and domain name investing strategies to help grow your business. In today's episode, I'll discuss and share a few thoughts as it pertains to how long domain investors should be willing to renew domain names prior to purchase. Of course, there's not a silver bullet answer outside of don't invest in domain names at all which this saves you money and time, yet that's also not domain investing. Nevertheless, today's podcast will focus on providing domain investors best practices and guidelines to help make the most of your domain investing experience, while hopefully helping you to minimize your cost as well as your risk while aiming to help you legitimize and realize domain investing profits. So let's not waste no time, let's get started. So I can go ahead and tell you that in most cases, most new domain investors are likely looking on the scope of 365 days. Um, In most cases, if you don't have deep pockets in terms of having uh, more than $1,000 to invest in domain names, and likely is the case, you're probably using uh, operating expenses, so things that you likely go out to eat on or uh, hopefully not pay your mortgage or your car note. But there have been those who have done that, um, and they've not been successful, and some have been successful. Uh, Nevertheless, though, one of the things that I I look at is you really should be looking beyond the scope of just a one-year investment. In my opinion, the one-year investment strategy, it really makes no sense uh, when knowing the average domain name sell or average domain name or the average time it takes, excuse me, to sell a domain uh, it takes on average, I think, like 400 days uh, to achieve a sale. So this isn't to say, you know, that, hey, that there aren't many domain investors out there that are, you know, holding, dropping and buying based on a one year strategy. There are. Uh, but quite often is the case. There's a large percentage of those who are, you know, hand registering or buying um expired domains, you know, in a matter of days, weeks, and months from the purchase date. And yes, they flip them, but the reality is their margins are quite low. And But I guess, hey, a flip is a flip. So no matter if you flip it and you make $25, $2,500, $10,000 or more, it is a flip. But in most cases, most are going to lean towards the former um, in that list of of values in terms of it probably being somewhere between $25 to $50 in terms of being able to buy a domain and flip it within a few days. You know, you're not going to go out there, hand register something or even buy an expired domain and then turn around in a week, or I mean, in a day, in a week, in a month's time, and then flip like a six-figure value. I mean, that's not to say it can't happen. It can, but in most cases, that's the anomaly. Um, that's the exception to the rule, and quite often, that's just not the case in terms of domain investing. So, you know, the truth be told, most hand reg and uh, Expired domain investments where you're hoping to, you know, flip them in under a year, that just simply doesn't happen. And so, in my opinion, you have to be more than willing to invest in a domain prior to purchasing. You know, you have to have that strategy, that mindset of saying, if I'm going to purchase this domain, then I am going to be in this domain beyond a year. And so, for me personally, a lot of people go, well, if you don't invest in it for a year, then what about two years? Here's my personal strategy, my personal thought as it as it comes to my own portfolio. In most cases, I tell most domain investors uh, at least look at it for three years. So if you're going to buy, be sure that when you purchase it, don't purchase it just for that year. Go ahead and, and extend it out for three years. Now, in most cases, I can tell you that new domain investors, one of the things that probably gets most is the simple fact that th- that they've not learned enough to know that you don't go to GoDaddy, set up an account, and just start buying domain names. Really, one of the suggestions that I tell for most newcomers is, hey, you you either um, need to get some sort of discount domain club, 
uh, some way to lower your cost in terms of your renewals. It makes no sense in going out and you're trying to call yourself a domain investor, yet you're paying $20, $30, $40 $40 when you could be paying a fraction of that cost. Um, but when you don't know, you don't know. And so that's what gets most domain investors. Everybody comes in, they're excited, they're gonna get rich quick. And the reality is that's just not the case. And the reality is you're probably as green as grass and you don't realize that one, it's gonna take you on average 400 days, but then two, you you haven't, you know, really reduced your costs in terms of um, a domain discount club sort of, uh, you know, price reduction. And then to add on top of that, you know, you're not willing to invest beyond the one year, you know, that you've already kind of stacked the cards um, against yourself. And it's only a matter of time before that house of cards, you know, ultimately falls. In my own personal experience, what I typically do, I'm into my domains. Now, whether or not I register, what I may do is I may buy a domain and I may register it you know, on an annual basis. But when I go to make that purchase, what I tell myself is I'm willing to inv invest at least five years into a given domain. Um, sometimes, depending on the domain, I will go ahead and put it out 10 years in advance. Um, but like I said, that takes and requires not only just a, a lot of uh, money, per se, you know, once you start building portfolios uh, beyond just a handful of domains, once you get into the thousands, you really have to be good at, at managing cash flow, but also you really have to have a strategy in place for what types of domains you're purchasing, whether that's hand reg, whether it's expired. Um, when I first started out, I was actually buying, uh, I was doing a lot of hand reg names that I would come across and I thought that they were great. When in reality now, you know, almost a decade later, I will still hand reg, um, probably in a given year, I'll probably maybe hand reg, uh, probably say 10 names, if that, uh, in a given year. Most of the domains that I'm buying are uh, either one or two things are expired domain auctions that either have bids or they don't have bids and they go into close out. Nevertheless, whatever I purchase, either out of those two groups or three groups, if you include hand reg, I'm going to be invested in them for a five to 10 year period. Um, so which brings me to that first, back to the first point in terms of being a new domain investor in hand registering. And oftentimes most people that are hand registering are doing what I'm calling uh, ambulance chasing domains or current events chasing um, or current events, domain registrations. And so, you know, they got the news on, the radio, magazines, and while many have done well doing that, again, the majority don't do well. And so oftentimes they're investing based upon what the news has said. If it's hit the news, it's too late. You're too late. You, In most cases, you would have had to been there five years anywhere from three, I'd say three to five to 10 years earlier to have hand registered that and then come into it. That's not to say that you can't register something and it all of a sudden flips, but again, that's, that's lightning in a bottle. That's the anomaly, that's the rule to the exception. So stay away from, you know, like I call, you know, stop the ambulance chasing of domains and current events registration. Get your real plan where you have, uh, you're building a domain portfolio either based on your line of experience. Um, and I really don't even know what to tell you outside of that. Really, I just say, hey, stay with what you know. Everybody knows something. You have expertise in some given area. Stay within that range, that given area. You know, if you're, if your thing is brandable domain, stay in that that little realm. If it's one word premium domain, stay up there. Or if it's three word, great, stay there. If it's geo service, stay there. If it's numeric, whatever it is, stay there. Uh, you'll hear a lot of people say it's .com. There are many people who are doing quite well in terms of uh, you know, CCL, CCTLDs, um, so the country code extensions. And so 
I think I remember uh, reading about Ron Jackson, who uh, owns and operates dnjournal.com. I think he got into the industry selling and flipping .us names. Um, another person, Raymond Hackney, I think he also uh, got into .tv sales, still into those sales. And so you you really have to figure out what your niche is. I'm not really uh, that acquainted or, or that knowledgeable when it comes to CCTLDs. Uh, but, you know, I go, hey, I have a given area of expertise and that's the lane that I stay in. Um, and I go, that's the the experience um, or that's the, the, the wisdom that I share with newcomers is get in your lane and stay in that lane um, and don't try to be something that you're not. And so with that, you know, also, like I said, I think the next step here is really looking at and saying for me, uh, from personal experience, I often will bid on expired domains, um, or rather, I go the rule of thumb is if I'm going to bid on something, I at least want three different bidders bidding, and that's not including yourself. Because um, oftentimes, if you really get get into your lane of experience and you're bidding on domain names with three or more people, oftentimes you can bid a domain, win it, get it into your account within a two week period and then flip that domain or post it for sale. And likely those bidders are willing to come back. Now, obviously you can't, you know, you can't win something for like $200 and then you're going to try to put it for 20,000. It better be a real good name if that's the case in most cases though. But if it's something that you invested, you know, $300 on and you put it at 1200, 1500, you just want a quick flip and quick return on your investment, then you can do that. But again, you got to have people who are uh, unique folks who are bidding on those expired domains. Um, I know a lot of times or really back when I originally started, you know, almost a decade ago, I would uh, I was out there just, you know, I would see a domain. It wouldn't have a bid. I'm like, oh, man, that's a real good domain. I put a bid on it. I'd be the only one purchasing it and then I'd have to hold it and then I you know I held it for three years and didn't get a thing no parking um, no offers or any of that stuff and it was just like great well I made it to three years guess I'll let it go and most of those I have let go and because of what I learned earlier on it's actually helped me be more successful now I could have been m more successful without having incurred the time um, or the loss of time as well as money, but there's no lesson like a bought lesson. So that being said, you know, help yourself out in terms of if you are going to bid, make sure other people are in there with you. Um, not unless you just know that a given domain um, it, it is worth something. So pay attention to that. The other thing that I did that um, in terms of I probably should have should have used a bit more wisdom in was staying away from closeout domain names um, early on when investing. And so now having the wisdom uh, to know what's a good name, oftentimes I I will look at a given domain prior to purchase and say, OK, hey, I'm going to try to sell uh, this expired domain auction or this closeout name um, by this time period. And if I don't, then at this time period, I will give myself basically two additional years to develop that. So what that does is I, that means that I can't go out and buy something that I don't have an ex I don't have experience in. And so I go, hey, I'm going to give myself three years to, to sell. If not, then I know that I can turn just be based on my software development uh, background as well as business background in terms of producing the content that's necessary um, to get it ranked um, and to develop a site and likely flip that site. And so, you know, it's not only just a domain name sell for me, but I can turn it into either a legitimate business or put something on it that it starts ranking and basically flip that to someone else. And so if you're early on in there and you're thinking about, you know, well, should I really invest in this type of domain name? And 
maybe I want to only going to invest a year. I look at it and go, look, if it's made it to the closeout, like let it go. Don't even touch it. Don't even waste your time. You do better by keeping that uh, anywhere from 15 to, to $30 in your pocket. Wait for the right domain to come along and then, you know, fire and, and capture that, that given domain. So stay away from close out domains. And one of the um, one of the next things that I was willing to do and and learn to do was bill was willing to bid on more expensive domain uh, names within my area of expertise. So my again that lane of experience, and so oftentimes you know people will get the uh, bee's knees or coal you know. I guess, I guess it's cold feet in terms of, oh my gosh, is it worth buying an expired domain for $250, $300? And oftentimes, the higher you go, um, oftentimes you'll get immediately re immediate responses for domain offers. Um, is what I've I've seen. That doesn't mean that that is the the rule of thumb, but. From what I've seen over the last decade, the higher I go in terms of what I'm willing to spend and in regards of if it's more than two or three people bidding, often is the case I can flip that domain with no problem um, just because either that person who um, is purchasing the domain, they're in that line of business so they understand what it means for their business to own it uh, versus having their competition own it or it's actually a broker or another domain investor who knows someone that they can get that to at a greater cost. Uh, I mean, at a, at a greater uh, profit. And so that being said, you know, oftentimes if you, if you really want to get into quick flips, you know, upgrade, upgrade what you're willing to invest in it and that'll get you into a whole different ball game, a different train of thought. So be willing to bid more on expensive domains uh, within your lane of experience or your lane of expertise and be willing to do that, you know, for more than that one year period of time. So the next thing, though, which is interesting to me um, in terms of being willing to invest. So one of the things that I typically do when I purchase a domain name, especially expired domains, is I put it on GoDaddy's cash parking. Great, I know that I could probably go to ParkLogic um, and there's a whole host of other uh, parking monetization companies and the reason I put it on GoDaddy is because my my method to my madness is this, is if this given domain that I believe so much in, that I've researched in, um, and it's within my lane of expertise, it should be uh, creating some sort of revenue. Even if it's if it breaks even in terms of it holds its own in terms of the uh, renewal cost. So if I can park it and it makes eight to nine dollars a year it covers the cost for itself and so that is something that um, most domain investors don't necessarily think of you know it's a it's a matter of oh i'm gonna hold the domain name i'm gonna hold it i'm gonna try to send some emails on it. i'm gonna try to make some calls on it well if those calls if those emails don't fall through then in most cases they're like well i'll hold it until the end of the year and then let it go well, the reality is, especially if it's an expired domain name and it can turn um, some sort of cash parking or parking revenue, I would say keep it, especially if it can get to that 8 to $10 range per year because it, then it can cover its cost um, in terms of renewal in addition to what you're willing to put into it. Um, and so I've had a, a number of domains that are you know anywhere from 30 to 40 dollars a year not anything to write home about but guess what they cover not only their costs for annual renewal but even others uh, within the domain portfolio so be willing to try parking domains to offset your renewal fees and that'll help increase the uh, that'll give you a longer runway in terms of getting beyond that average um, domain sale time of the 400 days, obviously if it's paying for itself and it does that 
year over year over year, then, you know, hopefully you're sitting back on uh, cash and, and basically upgrading your domain portfolio along the way. So one of the last things, um, and it's something that I hadn't tried before, and I mean, I listed a few domains at GoDaddy, I've listed a few at CETA and not had really any uh, success. And so um, I believe last year I started listing uh, a good number of my domains at AfterNick and lo and behold, um, kind of stumbled up on, I guess, a, um, a strategy that's, that's working for me. And so essentially I'm using, uh, so I built a, a software platform, uh, platform called dncloser.com. And essentially what it does is it goes out and it takes a look at, um, so I, I, I basically go through, I'll research GoDaddy's um, expired domain auctions, those that don't have bids. So expired domains that don't have bids. I will input the ones that I would like to purchase if they don't have bids and they're likely to go in the closeout domain. And I don't want to wait until, you know, it reaches the final day of closeout at the $5. I want to try to purchase it at that $11 range. And so I built this tool that uh, basically goes out and it will, uh, I guess, basically snipe that domain and obviously GoDaddy closed that loophole some time ago. Matter of fact, I think it was sometime last year that it was closed, um, probably over a year and a half ago actually, that it was closed and you know, you couldn't no longer do that from the client side web browser. And so I fortunately had an account that was um, grandfathered in and so I'm able to use their API to basically get, um, I guess you'd say, domains that are flying under the radar. And so essentially I use dncloser.com, purchase those domains, and then I take those same domains and go out and list them on AfterNick and have been quite successful, uh, you know, doing that because obviously I'm getting them, um, I guess you really say pennies on the dollar, turning them around and, um, you know, I'm able to to flip them, uh, and, and and in some cases, uh, I, I've not seen anything like, hey, I purchased it and I was able to do it within 30 or 40 days. It it's taken some of them months. You know, um, I had one that I purchased, and uh, I think it was like seventy dollars. I think it was EarthBattery.com. It was like seventy dollars, and I listed it on um, afternick.com for like 2400 and I want to say it was something like, I want to say it was like three or four months that I held that domain. And so, I mean, you look at that and you go, wow, like pay that cost, turn around $2,400. Obviously, Afternick takes their piece of the pie and it was like almost $2,000 um, of profit that, you know, came home to me. And all I did was basically put it into dncloser.com, it snagged it for me, hit my account, I listed it, and walked away. Um, obviously, that's like lightning in the bottle. That's kind of the anomaly, the exception to the rule. But, you know, I'm also starting to see um, by listing some of my domains that I've held for quite some time, five or more years, um, I just sold a, a, another um, domain that basically I was in almost seventy dollars. Um, purchased this domain, I want to say in two thousand thirteen, so six years ago, and essentially this um, this domain basically sold for forty eight hundred, a little over forty eight hundred dollars on Afternick, which is like a thirty eight hundred dollar profit, and the reality is. I was not going to be able to develop a um, domain on it. And the domain itself, it was goangling.com. Um, and I just threw it out there on Afternick, like I said, for $4,800. I thought that was a reasonable ask and somebody thought it was too, purchased it. And here we are six years later, 
and turn 70 into that 38, a little over $3,800. And so those are the things that I look and say, you have to find your strategy. You have to find your given domain names that you're willing to invest in and be able to cover their cost while you wait for, you know, that, that, that sweet spot sell to come in. And so be willing to list your domains at uh, CDU, at After Nick, and even Uniregistry, as well as others. And so, you know, how long should domain investors be willing to invest in domains? I think you really, this is not a one size fits all, uh, you, you know, type of a situation. You really need to, take good inventory of what your skill sets are, what what your strengths are, what your weaknesses are, what you can, can't do, uh, and come up with your own strategy. Like I said, for me, I, I don't necessarily have the time to go dialing up, sending emails to people and all that stuff, but, you know, with the area of experience that I'm in uh, or have an eye for, I do know when I see certain domain names that are that are good two word domain names or two word combinations. Hey, I go and I get those. Um, and like I said, it also helps because I don't necessarily have to sit in front of a computer when I have dncloser.com that is basically doing all the heavy lifting for me. Now, obviously there are times or moments that the domains that I put in, they end up with like a bid and you know, it, that just comes with the territory. Um, you just have to be willing to allow some of those domains to go through and uh, just know that you're not going to get your hands on them. But for the ones that you do, hey, you make the best of it. Put it out there. And for me, I put it out on afternoon, list it. And I don't, you know, I set it, forget it, don't think about it. And whatever it is, it is. If it's $7,800, great. If it's $2,500, great. I try not to go uh, below that $2,500 mark. Now, there are a few that I just look at and go, you know what? I, I'm going to try to get what I can get out of this, and I'll put it no lower than $1,500. But in most cases, it's going to be around that $2,500, $2,700 mark. And so um, that being said, you know, with a good chunk of time invested on the front end to create your own rules of engagement for a sound domain investing strategy, that should and will save and make yourself quite a bit of money uh, in under the average time it takes to sell a domain, which is 400 days. Um, and like I said, I mean, I gave a few examples there. Uh, one was a six year example, the other was, you know, a couple months. Uh, and so having a pretty good year uh, using After Nick and uh, definitely look forward to uh, more sales to close out, you know, 2019. So with that, I hope that this has been insightful. If you have any questions, if you have any comments, please uh, send them to me uh, at alvin at kickstartcommerce.com. Again, that's alvin at kickstartcommerce.com. And with that, we're out of time. So thank you listeners for tuning in to Kickstart Commerce, where we share search marketing and domain name investing strategies to help grow your business. Please subscribe to this podcast via iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, or Podbean. Last but not least, please visit kickstartcommerce.com to subscribe to the weekly newsletter sharing tips and tricks about disciplines of digital strategy. Thanks, and that's all for now.